My name is Galen Erickson. I'm a beef feedlot extension specialist for the University of Nebraska and also a professor in the Department of Animal Science. And I work primarily with finishing cattle. <clears throat> and we've been very interested in what do we do to maybe uh, make the economics more favorable for finishing cattle. And one of the more recent uh, approaches that we've been evaluating is how much silage should we be feeding? What are some of the issues surrounding silage? So that's what I'm going to uh, at least summarize today that was for our, uh, our, uh, hus our, our corn silage for beef cattle conference. The, one of the reasons we got involved in this topic was uh, things are different today. So corn silage is an old ingredient for sure. It's been around for, for thousands of years. But what's new or what our new approaches are is that uh, corn silage becomes economical when grain's expensive. Also, we think that it can interact well with distiller's grains. The best example of that is, is this uh, graph where you look in the blue line. That was some recent work by Birkin and looking at that as you go from 15 to 30 to 45, all the way up to 55%, you can see that the line decreases. Cattle become less efficient. But that was recent work and all those diets had 40% distiller's grains in the diet. The blue line is some work we did 15 years ago looking at 15, 30, or 45 percent silage, and the blue line, the, the cattle become less efficient too. But those diets did not contain distiller's grains because frankly it wasn't a popular ingredient uh, 15 years ago. So that's what's got us interested in this, and we've done some follow-up work. Um, this is just one example, looking at feeding uh, uh, 40 percent distiller's grains with 5 percent corn stalks, a very typical diet when we're feeding a lot of distillers. On the left, and the cattle convert with about a 5.9 feed conversion or feed to gain. When we feed 20 percent distiller's grains, which is the first, the next two columns, with either 15 percent silage or 45 percent silage, uh, you can see that feeding more silage increased conversions from 5.7 to 6.02, or about a 5% increase in feed conversion. So the feed conversions get worse when you feed 45% silage instead of 15. And that's in diets with 20% distillers. The last two columns um, is feeding 40% distillers grains with either 15 or 45% silage. And there again, the conversions went from 5.6 to 5.9 and increased about 5% by going from 15 to 45% silage. So it is very clear that if you feed more silage, you will uh, tend to decrease feed com or increase feed conversions or feed to gain. In other words, cattle are less efficient. Uh, but the real question is, is, is it more economical? Um, there's other issues to evaluate. One is, is uh, we can have what's called brown midrib silage. There's not a lot of recent work, at least in beef cattle. This is some older work from 1981 by Keith and others where they compared a control silage to a BMR silage across two different years. And so each of those columns, they're side-by-side -side comparisons for average daily gain and feed conversion. Um, and in general, feeding BMR silages, at least when it's mostly the corn silage diet, which is the far left column, in general, uh, that uh, improves either average daily gain or feed conversion or both. Kernel processing is another top, po popular topic, so I've gone back and tried to look in the literature and there's not a lot of data on beef cattle. Uh, this is one study or one example from Iowa State uh, published in 87 where comparing a control silage versus a silage that was chopped and then rolled where the kernels are processed and really didn't see much effect. In diets with uh, uh, low energy diets is what the low, medium, and high are, or different energies. Generally speaking, uh, you see some numerical improvements in feed conversion when you have a low energy diet and you process those kernels. You see a numerical improvement in the high energy diet and no improvement. In fact, it goes the other way around in a completely silage based diets. So some different results, but I also got to point out none of those effects were significant in their study, um, probably because it wasn't uh, well replicated back then. 
The last thing we've been looking at is when is the optimum time to harvest, and so what would be the moisture content or the dry matter content at the time of harvesting. And when we, uh, so we've looked at this recently where we, we in siloed silage or chopped silage when it was 37% dry matter or 43% dry matter. And then we took those silages after being in siloed and fed it either 15 or 45% of the diet. And if you look at this table, the uh, average daily gain uh, was not influenced by whether you put up dry or silage when it was fed at 15% of the diet and the feed conversions were the same. Similarly, when you fed it at 45% silage, it didn't matter if the silage was a bit drier, it didn't affect gain and feed conversion. Similar to what we've already discussed, going from 15 to 45 did uh, decrease the gain and increased or hurt the feed efficiency, the feed conversions. We also did that in growing studies and, and uh, so in finishing studies, Putting up dryer silage did not have any impact on performance. In growing study where the cattle were fed 88% silage as the base of the diet, so majority of the diet, uh, feed conversion was actually a little bit worse when you put up dryer silage. Conversions went from 5.6 to 6.1. So I guess our, our take home points are is that the silage inclusion uh, really can influence performance. And as a general rule, it will make cattle less efficient or increase feed conversion. But it still may be profitable, and that's one of the main outcomes from our, our conference here today. In almost all of our growing and finishing diets, especially if they're silage based, you need to feed distillers grains or if there's any other economical source of bypass protein. Uh, whether they're genetically modified uh, corn hybrids or not doesn't seem to influence the cattle performance at all. Uh, BMR hybrids that have less fiber, it's a real plus, um, uh, uh, but much more data are needed. Kernel processing, the data suggests, doesn't have much impact. Again, more data, we think, are needed in that area, especially for finishing cattle. And then lastly, you know, don't cut your silage too soon. We think targeting dry matters in the upper 30s or uh, moistures in the low 60s is a good approach.